So this is part of a conversation about Excel skills that can be used for data and data analysis and data management. And what we're going to focus on today are a set of skills that relate to something called data wrangling. And this is something that I think is probably one of the most important data management and, and research skills um, that you can have, uh, in part because it shows up in every single data problem and also because it's not really a skill that you can just simply learn once. It's more of an art form. Data wrangling has to do with taking the data that exists out in the world that you pull off the web or you download and turning it into a format that like fits where it needs to be in your Excel uh, spreadsheet. And that ends up being really tricky because information oftentimes comes to us in ways where things aren't quite in the right place or there, there are oddities about how things downloaded or translated. And so we need to figure out how to work through some of that and get things where they need to go. And so I'll, I'll just sort of highlight where this is fitting in sort of a larger context. Um, we've got sort of our various different Excel skills that we're going to be working on. Um, and data wrangling skills include everything from knowing how to split strings um, apart um, to using some of our, our filter and sort tools that we've we've talked about before, um, how to paste values or, or paste transpose. And so we'll, we'll talk about a lot of that today and kind of highlight how it can work on a specific uh, data wrangling problem. And so for that specific data wrangling, wrangling problem, um, I'm going to share with you just briefly um, some census data. This is something that Really available online. US census, data, census keeps track of population that has insurance versus the total population. And they've got some information for us on different subgroups. And maybe I like this data. I think it's kind of, you know, maybe useful. And I want to make some graphs on it or, or organize it into different tables. And so I want to put it in Excel. And I might assume that I can do that fairly easily by clicking over to the download option and selecting that yeah that's this is the table right in front of me this is what i want to download i'm going to do that um and so we go download and download selected it asks us what years we want i click download and it'll download it to my hard drive and i can pull it up and it turns out what i get is a zip file with like eight different files in it um, some of them are metadata some of them are background um, but i have to sort of look through and find the data set that that actually contains the information and when I do that, when I get that information, what I find is that it isn't exactly what I was looking at before on the web. I get something that looks like this. All the information is there. It's just there in a way that isn't what I was expecting, that maybe isn't as easy to work with. And I'd rather have it look more like something like this, where it's sort of separated out and I can kind of see it visually the way I was seeing it visually before, in that table online. And so that's a classic data wrangling problem. I brought the data in, I've got it in cells, but the cells aren't organized the way that I want them to be. I need to figure out how to maneuver stuff around. So we're gonna talk about how to, how to do that. Um, and so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select all of the data. Um, and the way that I'm gonna do that, um, I could just click up here, um, but I'm gonna get a lot of other stuff. And, I, and in this case, I just specifically want the, the data itself. And so I'm gonna put my cursor um, at the, sort of very left hand side at A1. And I'm going to hold down Control and Shift. Um, and that tells Excel that we're going to do some selecting. And when I click the left, sorry, the right arrow, um, it's going to run the, the selection all the way over to the very end where it, it hits a blank cell. And so we're, we're way out there, dozens and dozens and dozens of columns. And now I've selected all those columns for row one. I've still got Shift and Control held down. And when I press the down arrow, it's going to tell Excel, all right, now select everything down until you hit a blank row. And so I'll hit down. And now I have that entire table selected. I should flag this doesn't work super well if you've got missing data and it, it stops um, frequently because it, it hits blanks and thinks that that's the end of the data. But when you have something like this where everything's more or less filled in, that's a really fast way to select everything. Okay, so I've got everything selected and I'm going to copy it. And I'm going to copy it to a new worksheet. So create a new sheet. And if I just clicked, you know, paste here, um, it's going to put the data exactly as it is on that other sheet. And that's not really useful. But I have some other paste options available. And they're sort of right across here. Or I could go to paste special and, you know, look at some of my options that are available. Um, it's a little bit different if you're working um, in Mac. Some of the menu layouts are, are different. But if you dig around, you should be able to find paste values which is I'm just going to paste the information that's showing in the cell, not any formulas or formatting that's behind it. 
um, formulas, we can paste just the formulas, uh, transpose. Transpose means we're going to sort of flip things around. And so right now our data is structured where we only have three rows and a ton of columns. And I want those columns to be functioning as rows. And so that's what transpose is going to do. And it kind of has these little arrows at that point, make it sort of intuitive that that's what's going to happen. And sure enough, when I click transpose, it does that. It takes every column and it says, all right, we're going to treat this, the information in this column as a row. And so it just sort of pivots that table in a nice little way. Except that there's some stuff that's maybe not quite right about the way it pivoted it. Um, well, the pivot's fine, but what's contained in it isn't necessarily the most useful stuff. So I've got my numbers, which are great, but then I've got these big, long, like descriptive things, margin of error, colon, uh, exclamation point, exclamation total, exclamation, it's, it's a mess. And what is happening is that if you recall back to that table that was online, there were all these sort of subcategories, right? So you have, um, uh, the population, and then you have by age, you have different subgroups. And the Census Bureau is trying to keep that information intact so you know what's happening in each um, row. The problem is that's a really clunky way to show that information. It's not the most useful way to present it, and I need to kind of unpack it. And so the idea of we're just going to use two exclamation points to sort of show where we move from like one bit of information to the next information bit of information that the delimiting um, the, the information out with, with um, exclamation points. We got to find a better way to do that. Now, this is a common enough thing. Um, in fact, it happens all the time in data wrangling um, that Excel has a built in tool for handling this. And so, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all of the strings, all of the, the everything in that column that I need to get transformed. Um, so, again, I'm going to hit Control and Shift to sort of do my, my big highlights. I'm going to hit the down arrow and it's going to pick up everything, all 612 rows worth of those strings. Um, and I'm going to use Excel's tool, um, its text to columns tool, to convert those strings each into something that's a little bit easier to work with. And so if you're typically starting in your ribbons menu, you're at, you're at home, you're going to want to go to data. And then if you sort of run across, there should be a text to columns option. And when we click that, it brings up this um, dialog box that is actually the same dialog box that you would get if you tried to import some data into Excel in a file format and Excel didn't recognize it. So this is basically Excel's way of talking through with you how is your data structured so that it knows how to put it into cells and columns and rows. So the first thing it will ask you is your data uh, delimited or is it fixed width? So fixed width is every eight characters is a variable and then you move on to the next column. Delimited is we're using something special to tell or to keep track of where we move from one column to the next. Um, so we're gonna stick with delimited because that's how our data is structured. And we're gonna go over here and Excel will oftentimes have um, the tab option click. That's a common one that the data gets delimited with tabs. Oftentimes when you copy things from the internet, that's how um, the copy and paste function works that uses tabs to, to separate that out. Um, but that's not gonna work here because we're not using tabs, we're using exclamation points. So I'm gonna click off of tabs um, and I'm gonna click the other option on and I'm gonna tell it I wanna use exclamation points. And it says, oh, and you can even see it, sort of realize what, what it should be doing in the data preview, where it's like, okay, whenever I hit an exclamation point, I start a new column. Well, yes, except that it's it has those blank columns now because it's hitting exclamation points twice. So we need to tell it that that you should treat consecutive delimiter, delimiters as a single delimiter. Um, and so I'll click that little box that says, don't don't add the extra column, just that's, that's the marker. That's where you've ended your, um, your string of for the next column. Okay, so we've, we've told it how to splice that up and it looks like it's working pretty well in our data preview. And so I'm gonna click next again, and it's gonna ask us, do you wanna format the data in any special way, right? So is any of this percentages or dollar values, like do you wanna add that information in? I typically don't, I find it's, it's easier just to kind of work with that later. Um, but one thing that I do need to do on this particular menu is, is pay attention to where it's gonna put that information. If I just click finish, it's going to try to spill um, where it sort of runs over a variety of, of columns. It's gonna spill that information over to the um, to the right, 
and it's going to run right over the top of data I already have. Now it should should um, give me a warning and say, "Don't do that." You know, you're going to be copying over data, but I need to find a, a better place to put it. So instead of um, just using the default destination that it's picked for me, I'm going to go in and find a new destination, and I want it to start spilling not here at column B three, but I'm going to have it spill on the other side of my data. So it doesn't run over the top of it. It just comes to the, the right of it. So I'm going to click here for D3 and click back in. And hopefully Excel now realizes that we're going to take that information in the column B, start putting it in columns D, E, F, G, how far it goes. So click finish. And sure enough, that's what it does. It splices it up into columns that I can then work with and are maybe a little bit easier for me to Play around with. So once I have that, I'm actually going to just delete this guy because it's not really doing anything useful for me. In fact, at this point, I'm also going to delete this one because it's not doing anything all that useful for me. And now I have um, my data. I have um, some information about what each of those um, numbers is, and maybe I can start you know drilling down to what I want. But there's something that I've noticed here, and that is that I've got estimates and I've got margin of error. And now that might be useful. Um, that I might want to have that margin of error, maybe I want to put it somewhere else, um, or maybe I just want to get rid of it. But it's kind of a pain because it's sort of interspersed throughout, uh, and so I've, I've got to find a way to kind of extract the, the rows that have margin of error. And there's a variety of ways you can do it, but I found the easiest is just, I'm going to select my data. Um, actually, I'm going to move this out of the way. I'll keep it because I might want it later, but right now it's kind of getting in the way. I'm going to... Um, delete that. I'm going to give some data. D1 for descriptor 1, D2 for descriptor 2, D3, descriptor 3, D4, descriptor 4, D5, descriptor 5. Um, okay, so my, now I've got a table with headers. I'm going to control shift over and down. Now I've got everything selected. And I can go back up and I'm going to click on the filter option. And again, we've talked about filter a little bit. It's a really handy way of sort of pulling out subsets of the data. And so in this case, I would like to filter out um, anything that has a margin of error in it so that all I'm left with are the estimates. Now, the margin of error isn't gone. Uh, it's just hidden. And you can see that if you look in the, the rows here, you've got two, four, six. It's, it's basically just skipping a row because it's hidden the margin of error stuff. Now that's great and all, except it's not gone. And I, I kind of need to be able to work with it without having it sort of lurking in the background. So I'm just going to copy this entire worksheet. Um, and you'll see that it's picking up only the stuff that's visible. And I'm going to paste it into a new worksheet. And as I paste it into a new worksheet, um, yeah, so I paste it into a new worksheet it's bringing over only that stuff that was showing that was visible. And so now I have my data that has all of the numbers that I was interested in before. It has what each of those numbers is in a way that I can maybe work with and, and read through and use as, as labels in a, in a chart or something. Um, and it's organized in a way that I can, can maybe access it. And so the data was there. It was given to us in, in, in tabular form. We just had to figure out how to be able to maneuver it around so that it was something that, that we could work with and, and that was useful for us.